What's up fellas? Today we're doing a little stainless steel passivation. Um, when you weld stainless steel, it loses its anti-corrosion properties. And that's a big problem in applications like in brewery equipment and things like that. So, I have a um, arc welder here ground into the table. Buddy, look at that. Look at that. We're going to spray it off. Okay, so essentially that is how you passivate stainless steel. This will now retain its corrosion resistant properties. You cannot get this effect without doing what we just saw there. It will just stay black. This isn't even all that good. It can do better than that, like I said, but you gotta be a good welder. So let's take a look at that after I change this brush out. Get kind of a before and after. It won't look much better, but it'll look a little better. Man, I'd hate to zoom in on my welds. Don't beat me up too bad in the comments. That's some good passive age stuff there. Wow, it does look a lot better. Check it out. I'm going to keep doing it. Okay, so here's the after shot after the passivation process. Now, like I said, you got to be a good welder to benefit from this process. And uh, nobody's nominating me for any awards on that anytime soon. I mean, like I said, I can run a bead, but stainless is a real bummer. It's a really good representation of the process. As you can see it, if, if I was a cameraman anyway, for crying out loud, iPhone. 
You cannot get this effect by simply sanding or grinding. This has been passivated and um, it will no longer rust. What I should do is run a bead right next to this and then throw this thing in a pot of water and check it out. I mean, all right, so a lot of you guys who follow my channel will come back to this later on in life. We are going to see what happens to the non passivated bead versus the passivated beads. They definitely look a lot better, so just the look alone is, is far more reassuring. I wish you could see what I'm seeing. They really are in beautiful shape now. They've got a great color to them. I wire brushed those ones off a little bit. This is with no wire brush. So, you know, had I uh, a, a TIG welder, I might have been able to pull that off. All right, fellas, so just a quick recap. You want to remember if you're doing this that the polarity, in my opinion, does have an effect. If you have any copper wire or any copper constituents on this section of the device, and then you have the polarity hooked up opposite what I have, for instance, anytime this particular portion is the anode or the positive terminal, the metal cations are going to migrate off of this and they're going to plate onto the object you're trying to passivate so if you have any copper inside of here or any iron I, I you can't plate iron obviously but copper will plate you can actually use this system to copper plate um, there's videos on it so I think it's best to have this the, be the anode specifically for that purpose and um, that way the cathode is always you know the the side that has the least corrosion anyway so why would we want this side to be under the electrical corrosion potential if we made this the anode it would be far more likely to corrode at the weld because the anode always corrodes in an electrolysis system anytime they're doing electro refining the anode is what dissolves so we don't want to corrode that. That's just my two cents on it. That's my take. And this has been stainless steel passivation using electrolysis. And that's just regular muriatic acid. This is hydrochloric acid. Do not leave containers of hydrochloric acid open in your shop. They will rust every piece of steel and every electrical contact available including micro switches and stereos cd drives in your computer and things like that so heads up on that fellas